our house has a big comfortable front porch across from the porch about 20 feet or so away is a rather large cedar tree on the right and then a rather large hemlock tree on the right on the left and the trees aren't very close together and there's nothing above them Jan and I both notice that at certain times of the morning the way the sun is shining you can see spider webs between these two trees and we kind of puzzle over this because there's absolutely nothing up above so how do the spiders manage to go between the trees I don't know I'm sitting on the front porch and I realize that I can see a spider in this space. There's like five five and more feet in either direction. There's nothing above it, yet there's a spider in the middle of this space. A lot of a lot of it is serendipitous but it's luck. The light is coming from behind and to the left as we're looking at this picture. So it's like ten o'clock in the morning. The sun is still fairly low in the sky. And the spider and the spider web is brilliantly lit up so i run and get my binoculars and i'm looking at this spider it's about maybe 30 feet from me 25 feet something like that not not real close by any means and i realize that the spider is going around in circles making a spider web and it's pretty it's the kind of thing that impresses me at any rate so i run upstairs and um get my camera in a tripod and I put a telephoto lens on it and I set it on the front porch and point it at this scene and just let it run and let it run and let it run. This is all in real time right now. The spider is um, busily going around and around. I would say that making the circles maybe took him less than 20 minutes something like that the movements of the spider web are due to the due to the wind there's no real wind but it doesn't take very much to move a spider web that's suspended like 10 feet 5 feet on either side with nothing up above it just little tiny puffs will make it move the white stripe across the back is the um the edge of my neighbor's house out of focus so we'll speed it up a little bit, and um, that was all real time. Now we'll speed it up just a little bit. This is maybe about twice, two, two times speed, or maybe a little bit more. You can still see him going around. And um, he finishes up and ends up in the middle of the spider web, sitting there watching. So he's sitting there waiting and waiting. And of course, by this point, I'm definitely voting for the spider, and I'm sitting there watching. This all transpired over 10 minutes. I'm watching the spider, again through my binoculars, and um, and I see bugs flying around. And the bugs are, um, it, it all has to do with, with the idiosyncrasies, the way the sun is shining on the scene. The, the bugs are very easy to see. Now, this is back to real time now. The, um, the spider is sitting quietly waiting for a bug to fly, fly by. And I see bugs flying by, and I'm hoping one just happens to go into his spider web. I've studied spiders at least a little bit, and there's a specificity between the size of the spider and the size of the fly I can catch. This spider, I'm guessing, is maybe five-eighths of an inch in diameter, including its legs. This is not a very big spider. And I think even a medium-sized moth would tear up his... Um, spider web but you can see the things flying around and many of them are very small just about right for this particular spider and then um so i go to edit this you know i go to download this video oh and i and i ran the video for another 15 minutes hoping to catch him a picture of him actually catching something but he, he never caught anything and i ran out of um, disk space on my on my on my camera so i come upstairs and i'm editing it and uh and I'm looking at these videos, I'm thinking these actually came out pretty well. I should uh, you know, maybe add a little bit to this. So I took the lenses and took the camera back downstairs, back out to the porch. By this time, the wind had come up and it had started raining. And guess what? The spider web, for all his work, was gone. The spider web was gone. So I think the lesson here might be, there has to be a lesson. I think the lesson might be that 
If you're a spider, you have the great honor of being the creepiest creepy crawly in the in land. And if you're a sp if you're a spider, you have plenty of legs. You know, you never have a shortage of legs. But the other side of it is that life is hard for a little guy like that. 